Hello everyone, this is Noble HMS Tech, and today we are here with another episode of Managing Ubuntu, where I teach you how to do Ubuntu things. And today we're going to be doing Managing Packages and Updates. And basically a package is a set of programs that kind of work together to do one thing. So a good example of a package would be, um, as you saw in our last video, we did something called processes, and we had a bunch of commands such as ps, kill, pwdx, top, those are all in one package, since they are kind of all related. So, yeah. So, to do stuff, we're going to open up the terminal. And then, to kind of just list all of the packages we have in our computer, we use the dpkg command, and then the option hyphen l. Okay, so this output is kind of confusing. Basically, on the left-hand side here, we have the installation status. So if it says II, that means it's installed. Um, then we have the package name, so zip, yelp, xterm, and these get kind of cut off, but that's okay. Um, and then we have the version number, so 7.7.0.1, 2.3.8, 3.10.1, .3 stuff like that. Then we have the architecture. All means that it's 32-bit and 64-bit. I386 means that it's 32-bit, and AMD64 means it's 64-bit. And then we have the package description. So it just tells you what what does Yelp XSL do. Well, it does this. Okay. So that's pretty interesting. Um, one thing you can do is you can put this into GUP. So let's say we want to look for all of the SSH packages. We do GUP SSH. And then it'll give us all of the packages related to SSH. And as you can see, now the package name and the description is not cut off. So you can see the full description. If you wanted to look just for the specific package SSH and not all of these related packages, you could do dpkg-l and then just type in SSH. And this will tell you the status of just the SSH package. As you can see, it's not installed. Because UN means not in installed. Um, so you could look for s different kinds of packages, such as FTP. There's anything you might think is notable, or maybe even a security risk. Um, Telnet. You can look for Telnet, and then as you can see, it's installed. So let's say you want to uninstall Telnet, because that's a security risk. It uses plain text. You should always use SSH, not Telnet. So we want to uninstall Telnet, because it's bad. Um... In order to do that, we use the apt command, and the apt basically deals with updates, installing packages, and removing packages. So you say apt, and then the keyword remove, and then type in the package name, which is telnet. But at the beginning here, since this kind of needs administrative privileges, since you are installing and removing packages, you put, put sudo, and then because sudo, it'll ask you for your password, so type in your password, and press enter. Okay. And the following packages will be moved. Telnet. Always make sure that this is what you want. It's not like Ubuntu desktop because you do not want to uninstall the desktop. So just make sure that you're not removing or installing anything you don't want to. And then press Y, enter. Okay. And now we can use dpkg now with Telnet. And as you can see, it now says OSC. So that means it's kind of marked for removal, and the only thing we have is the configuration files. We, it's not actually installed. Okay? So let's take a more kind of complicated example. So let's search for remote desktop programs. Okay, so we kind of have these four remote desktop programs. That are, they're basically packages that are all related to Remina. So, in order to kind of uninstall all of these related packages at once, we use the purge keyword. So, this will get rid of all of the related packages, and it will get rid of the configuration files. Again, remember to put snow. Okay, so this says Lumina, Lumina plugin ODP, and Lumina plugin VNC. It does not say Lumina common, so I'm actually going to put no. Because I want to include Lumina common, so I go back to our original command. And then after Lumina, I type in another package, which is Lumina Common. So now it will purge both Lumina and Lumina Common at the same time. 
Okay, so as you can see, it says Lumina, Lumina Common, Lumina Plugin ODP, Lumina Plugin VNC. Those are all full packages we wanted to uninstall. So I type in Y and press Enter, and all of them will be uninstalled. Okay, and now just to check with the status, we can do the hyphen L command again, and then search for the specific package Lumina. And as you can see, it says UN, so it's uninstalled. Okay, so that's basically it for removing packages. Or let's say you want you don't want to remove packages, but you want to like search packages to see if there's anything you want to install. So for this, we also use the apt command, but we say search, and then you can type in some keyword such I don't know games. Okay, so this gives us a bunch of games. Not all of it might be related games. Sometimes you'll get um, bad results, such as this. This doesn't seem to be about games. It's about YouTube videos. Yeah, you can see some pretty cool games. Color racing. I don't know what this is. Engine. I guess I think that's a game engine. Uh, a Visual Boy Advance. I guess I, that's probably a GBA emulator. So you can just kind of go through this and see if you see anything you like. And let's say you do see something you like, let's say, uh, actually I'll use the example at the bottom. Let's say you want to download this SNES emulator and you want to know, say, more about it. So for this, we do apt and then the show keyword, and then Z SNES because that's the package name. Z SNES is the package name. Okay, and then it'll give you all of this stuff at the top. In my opinion, this stuff isn't as important as the description. The description is at the bottom. So as you see, it says... Z SNES allows you to play classic games written for the SNES game console on a GNU Linux system. Please note that many separately available g games playable under the simulator are not free. That means they're not open source. And then see this readme file for more information. Okay, seems pretty legit. Seems pretty legit. Yes. So let's say you want to know more about um what's the installation status of the package. Maybe it's already installed. Um maybe it's not installed. So for this we use the apt cache. Um, command, and then we use the policy keyword and then type in the package name. Okay, so as you can see, it says installed none and the candidate, and then it gives you the version number and then gives you kind of this table of different version numbers that are available. Just as, as an example, here is a package that is installed. So if you do apt cache policy FTP, then it'll tell you what version you have installed, and then it'll compare that to what version you can get. Okay, so now we've looked at ZSNES, we want to have it, it's not installed, so now we want to install it. So for this we use apt install and then ZSNES, and I think we need sudo since it's installation. So we do want to install, it does not query us because sometimes it just doesn't do that for installations, it doesn't ask us yes or no. That can be kind of annoying, but oh well. And now we can run ZSNES from the terminal. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, we have this thing that came up. Obviously, this is the ZSNES. Not sure how this works. I'm just going to go down to quit. But as you can see, it clearly worked. So yeah, that installation worked. So. As you can see, that's basically how you install packages. Um, if it says something like make sure you have read permissions to something, you might want to go in sudo zsnes. I'm not going to do that right now, but you can try that out at you, on your own time and see if it works better. Okay, so that's basically it for installing packages. And now we're just going to we're just going to kind of see like. Uh, I'm just going to go through the file system and show you how it stores programs. So as you can see, I did cd slash, that means we're at the root of the file system, and then ls, and it'll give you a bunch of directories here. The things we're interested in here is bin, sbin, and user. So bin and sbin store a bunch of programs that you use that you would use in like single user mode before you kind of log in. So there are things that are really important and really low level that are kind of important and need to be usable before we get to this user folder. So I'll just show you bin. 
So as you can see, we have a bunch of like really important commands like make a directory, a ps, pwd, um, delete files, copy file. I think cat is in here. Yes, cat. Um, so yeah, it's a bunch of... These are all very important programs. Bash. Bash is very important. That's the terminal. Okay, so if we go back to Espen, and then look at what an Espen, um, you might not have seen all of these. FSDK is for like partitions, so that's important because if you, I've needed to run this before, and because something in my partition was corrupted, so that's something you would use. Reboot. So all of these are kind of like you need an You need to be an administrator to run these. So that's different between bin and Espen. These are kind of for administrator stuff. Okay, and then if you go back to slash, as you can see, there's this user. So these are kind of programs that you use um, after you log in. So we'll go to the user, and then as you can see, we have a bunch of stuff, libraries. Um, what we're really um, focused on here is games, bin, and spin. Obviously, games is for games. So I'll do that. As you see, we have Kausei, Kausink. So obviously, very important games, except for Kausei. Kausei is actually for an administrator. It's very important, as I'll show you here. Yeah, this is this is used for morale, so people have friends while they're in the terminal. So that's actually very important. It's not a game. Don't mess around with it. Respect the cow. But anyway, you can go back to user, and we have bin and spin. Okay, so these are kind of, as you can see, we have zs and yes. That's what we just installed. So user bin is where you'll see like a lot of the programs that aren't low level, just regular programs. So yeah. And then we can do cd slash user slash espen and look through that. Um, as you can see, we have commands related to dbkg user. We have del user. So all, again, these are all kind of administrative stuff. Adding users, deleting users, modifying users, stuff like that. So let's say you kind of just looking at the stuff. You want to know like what package is, say, um, vsudo. What, what package is that in? just as an example so in order to inspect a file and see what package it's in we use the dpkg and then hyphen capital s command and then we can type in over file such as vsudo okay and then we see that this is part of the sudo package so we can in order to list in order to find out more about the sudo package we can do hyphen lowercase l as you see, it says, oh. since it doesn't show us the whole description, I'll actually put it into grep. So I'll, once we put it into grep, it shows you the whole description. So provide limited super user privileges to specific users. So I guess it's something to do with super users. So that's, and if you want to list all of the files that are in that package, we do dbkg and then hyphen capital L, and then we do sudo. And this kind of shows you the different um, folders that this package uses. So as you see, we have sudo pam in the init file, sudo. So the sudo command is here. We have sudo edit command. You might not know what that is. vsudo, sudo again, sudo replay. So you, you can just kind of see and just mess around with this stuff. See what's in each package. So that's kind of cool. If you want to know, like, let's say we have a command such as ps, and you want to know the location of that command, we can do the hutch command, and then type in a command, ps, and it'll tell you where it is. So you don't need to go through bin, user bin, s bin. You can just see that it's in slash bin, because the hutch command tells you. And then once you have that, you can do dbkg hyphen capital S slash bin slash ps. And then we now know that it's in the proc ps um, package, so we can check what that is. Okay, and slash proc file system utilities, and slash proc is basically the folder that has to deal with all of the processes. And then we can also list the files in proc ps. And then we see we have pkill, snice, kill, ps, sys, ctl, um, top, uh, pwdx, pgrep. So you see, we kind of just have all of this stuff. So yeah, it's pretty interesting just to go through all of this stuff. So dpkg and the user bin, user aspin folders can really help you find out more about things. So yeah, that's basically it for inspecting stuff. So I'll clear. 
terminal. And the last thing I want to get to is actually updates. So let's go back to the home directory first. Um, to manage update settings, um, there's a way to do this completely in the terminal, but in my opinion, it's not really worth it. So instead, we're going to use a GUI program called software-properties-gtk. Then since it's a GUI program, I'll put an ampersand so we can type commands and run this program at the same time. Okay, so as you can see, this is the software and update settings. You can also get to this by clicking system settings and then clicking software and updates. But in my opinion, doing this command is easier. So as you can see, we have downloadable from the internet, and then it gives you a bunch of options. Main, universe. So main is basically um, canonical supported software. Canonical is the company that guns Ubuntu. Universe is basically completely open source, community maintained software. Restricted means like proprietary. I think Flash would be in restricted since that's proprietary. And then multiverse is restricted by copyright or legal issues. So actually, I think Flash might be in multiverse, not restricted, multiverse. And then the source code is basically, do you want to download the code when you download an update? And then download from, so this isn't really important. But basically, you probably want to have all of these checked since this gives you access to more packages when you do the apt search command and you can search for more kinds of packages and then we can go to other software so this just gives you like third-party developers sometimes you'll need to add repositories for different software if you need if the up if they're not from the regular main repositories just be careful when you add a repository because and I won't get to that in this video, but just be careful since third-party software can sometimes have bugs or viruses in it. But if you stick with the main software, you'll be pretty good. If you stick with the stuff, you'll probably avoid any viruses. And then we can get to update settings. So to we usually want to click important. Oh, and to do this, we need a password. Okay, so to do this, we need a password as it just showed you, and we usually want to um, click important and recommended. Th those are the kind of updates. And then to check for security updates, you usually want to do that daily. Always display immediately. Or you can do download automatically, download and install automatically. Your choice, really. Um, when there are other updates, display immediately. And notify of a new Ubuntu version. This I don't think is as important, but you can if you want to update your computer, you can do for any new version or for long term support versions. If that's your choice really. But I think definitely you should automatically check for updates and when there are other updates display immediately. And I think that's those two are really important. And checking important recommended. That, that, that's really important too. And then this stuff isn't really important for this video. So once you're done, click close, and it'll save your settings. Um, there is information that's up, up to date. Um, actually, I'll get to this in the terminal. Okay. So, so as you can see, it just says that your software is out of date. So, in order to update the apt cache that holds all of our different packages that are available, use the apt update command. So this doesn't actually install any updates, but it just gives you more information about what's available. Oh, we moment to use sudo. So as you can see, that took kind of a while, but basically it went through the um, main repositories and basically just got it got what's available. So now our apt cache is updated. And if you want to actually install the updates on the packages you have installed, you can do sudo apt upgrade. I'm not going to do that right now since I think that takes a while, but yeah. sudo apt upgrade 
actually updates your computer. So always remember to install update actually to run apt update before you run apt upgrade since you need to install the updates before you, you need to download the updates before you install them. That's what I meant. Update downloads the updates and upgrade installs the updates. And as you can see after we just did that, it notifies us of the updates available since we did install um notify immediately. So we can install now if we want to. I don't want to. So yeah. And that's basically it. There are other things that you can do with packages. There's also like, you can download .deb files and there's th ways to deal with that. There's also PPAs if you want to look that up. You can look up adding app to repositories, which I touched on a little bit in this video. But other than that, I think that's basically it for packages and updates. I might get to that other stuff in a later video. But yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped and have fun managing Ubuntu.